Hey, this is Amanda Hammett, and this is the Millennial Rockstar Podcast. Hey, and welcome to this episode of the Millennial Rockstar Podcast. Today, we have Rachel Gerald, who is an internal auditor at Valvoline. And although she's only three years into her career, she actually walks us through the importance of face-to-face -face conversations and how that can really move your career forward. So watch up and see what she has to say. Hey there, my name is Amanda Hammett. I am known as the Millennial Translator because I help companies attract, retain, and engage top millennial talent. And speaking of top millennial talent, today I am talking to Rachel, who is coming to us mm -hmm. from Valvoline Headquarters. Hey, Rachel, thanks for coming Hi. on. Millennial Thank Rockstar. you for having me. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Now, so Rachel, tell me a little bit about you and your career. So I'm a Buckeye, I graduated from Ohio State and started here in april 2015 so i've been an audit now for going on three years uh got a finance degree um yeah that, that about sums me up as far as my background <laughs> awesome awesome now rachel did you always know you wanted to go into finance was that always the plan i knew that i wanted to go into business just because i've always liked math and been good at that um i've watched my dad go through business and he's been successful and kind of see that lifestyle Mm -hmm. um, so I knew it was either accounting or finance and when I got into the classes I thought you know finance is a lot more fun because you can put a lot more like creativity and assumptions around that and it's about the future not the past right so I I really enjoyed that aspect of it that's awesome I love yeah. it I love that so you know has there I know that you are, are fairly new to the working world I mean what three mm -hmm. years yep um, so is there have there been any moments thus far or or let's let's start with this right what has been the biggest difference between um, what you thought about the workforce versus the reality that you have found now that you're in the workforce I don't know that I had any like preconceived notions as far as what it would be like I would say um, for me in college, I was a very serious student and I basically treated it like a nine to five job. I told myself, you know, I'm going to be in the library studying if I'm not in class. So wow. I kind of transitioned very well through that. Um, yeah, I studied, I studied a lot. I graduated in top five in my class. So <laughs> I, and I had Ohio to, State's not small. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. So um, I kind of took that approach, which translated well to the working world. Um, and I, I have to say, I like the working world a lot better than school, just because you get to see like those real life impacts that your work makes. Wow. I love that. So tell me about um, what the process was like for you when you were leaving Ohio State and you were mm -hmm. looking for that first job coming right out of college. Mm -hmm. you know, were there specific things that you were looking for? Were there things that you were like, I definitely know that this is not for me? Walk me through that. Um, well, audit is like one of the best places to start and I would definitely recommend it to anybody who's coming straight out of uh, college because you get just a whole lot of experience to a lot of different areas of the business. So coming in, you know, with no experience other than the classroom, I was able to get like a really broad view of this company, you know, mm -hmm. through SOX testing is when, where I started, but I've also worked on projects, you know, ranging from supply chain and procurement all the way through, you know, finance and accounting. So um, audit was something that I was definitely interested in just because it gives you a very well-rounded view. That's, all. That's really cool. That's so cool. Yeah. So now what about, has there, have there been any stumbling blocks thus far in your career? Just, you know, things yeah. you had to deal with? I would say just, I mean, I think it's normal for everybody. You have to take charge of your own career, right? You know, nobody's going to uh, open those doors for you necessarily. So you have they to do, make... to do that. <laughs> no. So, but I mean, that's the same as it was growing up and, you know, in school, but I think not everybody realizes that, that, you know, if you're interested in something or you want to learn more about something, you have to take that initiative and reach out. And so I've done that. Um, I've also been come across areas where, you know, I need more challenge and I don't feel necessarily like um, I'm being challenged as much as I okay. should be and I could grow more. So that's something where, you know, you have to have that conversation and say, I'm eager and willing to take on more responsibility. Um, and if you don't raise your hand, you'll never get that chance. So Rachel, walk me through that conversation. So who do you have it with? Kind of set the right. scene for me. Tell me about that. I love it. Um, well, I mean, it, it's basically, you know, you asking for 
more opportunity with your boss, you know, and kind of weaving that into conversations because, you know, you don't want to come out and just say, Hey, I want X, Y, Z and saying, you know, I have some availability or I'm really interested in this side of the business. I'd like to work on a project here. I'd like to work on a new area because I've done this and I know it really well and I'm ready for something new. Um, So basically I just brought it up and, you know, we have trimester reviews here, Um, brought it up then and said, you know, I really like my work here, uh, but I'm very interested in this one particular area. And I feel like, you know, now's the time I'm ready for some more challenge and responsibility. And I'd love it if you could help me with that and help me grow my career. So Rachel, I, I want, I want you to emphasize this point. You, you said it, um, but you, you just okay. glossed over it. I want you to spell this out. Are these okay. conversations in person? Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's the way you have to do it. And I'm, I'm probably not like most millennials as far as that's concerned, because I am somebody who doesn't really like to hide behind the email and the I am. I like to go talk to people. Good. Um, but I think that's also part of audit because, you know, we're the auditors. So we really have to work on that relationship. Um, and the only way you can really do that is by going and talking to people. Okay. So. I, yeah, I think that's really great. I, I One of the things that I see a lot is that millennials who are ready and want to move forward, they work it into an email or Not some enough, sort of yeah. electronic, you know, conversation. And I'm like, right. that's, this is where eye to eye contact is really important. You need mm-hmm. to show that you are ready for that responsibility. And that comes through building that sense of trust. Right. So you, you I 100% to agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I love it. I, I, I love it. And I love that you're taking charge and really not waiting for someone else because mm-hmm. I, I speak to a lot of people and they're like, well, I want my work to speak for itself. And I said, mm-hmm. I get that. You know, I, it's, it's good that you want to do good work, but sometimes right. you have to like point it out. Hey boss, you got, 12 other people you're managing, you know, I just want to make sure that, you know, I'm ready to move on. Right. You think I'm ready. Let's, right. What am I missing? And I think they appreciate that honesty too. And transparency, like I'm a super transparent person. So if I feel, you know, like, Hey, I would love to take on this added responsibility and I'd love your support in that. I have no problem saying that. And I think they appreciate that too. Perfect. Perfect. Oh gosh. You're awesome. I, I just, I, just <laughs> Thank you. I, I think you're awesome. <laughs> So let's, let's talk a little bit about your boss again. Um, Mm -hmm. So is there anything that your boss or maybe um, I I know that you work in, in a, in a group or Mm -hmm. any of your coworkers, or maybe you have a mentor or an advocate within Valvoline. Is there anything that they're doing specifically that really keeps you engaged and motivated Mm -hmm. and wanting to like get out of bed in the morning and audit some different departments? (laughs) I think um, communication is a big part and having like those checkpoint meetings with them um, and having that two-way communication as far as what's going on. Uh, training is also something that Babylon is really supportive of, which I think is awesome. So I recently got my CIA, which sounds really cool, but um, it's Certified Internal Auditor. So I took three tests to become certified for that. And, you know, Babylon was supporting me 100%. Cool. Um, and then they also have like continued training through not only for audit, but they also bring in people who talk to us about, you know, MBA programs and if we'd be interested in that. Um, so there, there are definitely opportunities for continued education here, which I really like that. That's awesome. Now, I, I know that um, Valvoline has some different uh, like employee resource groups and, and, and things like right. that. Is there anything that Valvoline is doing, whether it's perks or benefits specifically, you know, you mentioned a little bit about some, some further development, mm-hmm. um, you, you know, charity work opportunities. Is there anything that they're doing specifically Valvoline itself to right. keep you like, Hey, I am gaining a sense of loyalty to this company right. because I feel a connection based on where they are and where I'm going. Yeah, well, Valvoline has a really strong culture, and I think the people here are really what make it, you know, special. Mm-hmm. Um, and Valvoline's always been a supporter in giving back. We have an employee giving campaign that I've been involved in. We do that every year. Um, this year for the new headquarter building, we actually had like a community celebration where we had a yard sale for all the things that we had from our old office building. Okay. Um, and then we opened up our brand new building to the public. So I was one of the tour guides who was able to learn some cool facts about our building and gift tours, which was really cool. So we've also done things like 
Habitat for Humanity as a group, which is a great team building opportunity. So um, that's definitely a plus of working with babbling. Yeah, absolutely. They get to give back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, it's you guys have done a really like nice job, and it just it's it's just a really friendly environment. I noticed there was not, uh -huh. everybody was just walking around with smiles on their faces. I was watching people just kind of walk by that, that desk in the front. Um, right. And I was waiting on someone, you know, towards the right. end of the afternoon and, you know, usually towards the end of the afternoon, you know, you hit that two o'clock slump, and <laughs> like, ah, but nobody, <laughs> nobody looked just down and out. They were really kind of walking around, smiling, uh -huh. laughing about different stuff. And I loved yeah. that. I thought it was it's a really strong culture, and I think too now that we've spun off, you know, spun off from Ashland, um, that everybody has that you know energized feeling that good things are happening for Valvoline. The future is bright, so we're all excited to be part of it. Oh, that's like commercial worthy, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. I mean, I think you can see that, and that you saw it when you were here, and that's the attitude. So, yeah, I, I definitely felt it. Um, it was, yeah, it was very much a palpable. So very good. I love it. Um, all right. So tell our, our audience here, is there anything that in your mind, or maybe your boss has told you since that mm -hmm. really made you stand out in the applicant pool or in the interview pool when you were going through the process to, to join a valve Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I think what really stood out the most coming, you know, straight out of college is just, you know, my strong academic record. I graduated with a three nine, which was not easy. Um, and just hard work ethic and willingness and eagerness to learn and, you know, contribute everything I can uh, to be part of the team. So I think that goes a long way. I, I think that you, you might be right on, on that teamwork <laughs> and collaboration. That's, that's right. Awesome. That's great. Now, um, is there anything that you wish, because I, I don't know this for a fact, but I assume that you did interview with other companies before you chose mm -hmm. Valvoline. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I would imagine that you were probably um, courted uh, by, other, <laughs> by other companies with some attractive offers and perks. But is there anything that you wish that companies uh, knew about hiring younger employees? Um. I wish that we could kind of challenge the stereotypes of millennials as far as, you know, there's a negative connotation and I don't really understand why because I think, you know, we're all just individual people. You know, I know when you were here, you mentioned something about you heard that millennials don't make eye contact. Well, you know, that's never really been a problem for me. Um, so I think those stereotypes, you really have to challenge them by, you know, being, <laughs> being different from that stereotype. Um, I wish that in the hiring process, it could go a little faster because sometimes it can take a whole, a whole lot of time. I know that's like ideal world, but, um, that's not a generational thing. No, that's just <laughs> overarching. I know. Um, but I'm losing my train of thought here, but, um, I did have another point that I wanted to, I'm sorry. I interrupted. No, it's okay. Your question was on hiring. Was there anything different? Yeah. Um, probably just also recognizing that even though you don't have a lot of experience, somebody has to take a chance on you and let you allow you to grow and have that experience. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Will, who hired me, took a chance on me. And I really appreciate that because, you know, you do come in with not a whole lot of experience. But I do think they should also recognize that you still have perspective and you still have things that you can add from the classroom and from your own personal experiences. So I think because a lot of the times the younger people get, well, you don't have any experience, but nobody will give you experience. So that's kind of Cut challenging. Out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Excellent. I think those are uh, all really great points. Um, <clears throat> and you kind of touched on this a little bit with the mm -hmm. shorter, um, the shorter uh, hiring process, but is there anything that you wish that companies did to make the hiring process easier or better besides short? Yeah, besides the time. Okay. Um, I think Babylon could do a good job of like recruiting further out. They do a good job of recruiting here in Kentucky and UK, but I didn't see anything when I was at Ohio State. So I think that getting in front of those college students, you know, in career fairs and things like that is really important because that kind of sets the tone and gets you in their mind. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, and that's what all, I mean, all my interviews pretty much came out from contacting somebody at a, at a career fair who I'd talked to. So I think that's a really good way to, um, to meet good people. Oh, fantastic. I think that's, I think that's great. Um, all right. Well, fantastic. Well, Rachel, that is really all I have for you. And that was, that was awesome. You are actually a rock star. Oh, I thank you. That's sweet of you to say. Phenomenal. <laughs> and I just, I really appreciate you being here and I'm just so impressed. I know that you are all of 25 years old, but I am, <laughs> I'm super impressed. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And I think what you're doing here is really cool. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of the Millennial Rockstar Podcast. If you are looking for even more information on millennials and some free resources, visit my website at amandahammett.com. The link is below. It's amandahammett.com. There you can download a free millennial employee engagement guide that will give you all kinds of tips and tricks on how to keep those millennials engaged on a day-to-day basis. Because we all know that millennials who are happy at work are more productive at work.